Hey guys, it's me, Dom, everyone's favorite movie reviewer. Just kidding, I'm nobody's favorite movie reviewer, but that's only because nobody knows me. Anyway, so I'm stuck here in my hometown of Shitsville, USA, rather than being out in San Diego Comic Con with everyone else. But the good news is, is that I finally got to see Star Trek Beyond last night, and it was fantastic. So, I'm gonna review it for you guys. So here's my official review for the movie that came out in the year of Star Trek's 50th anniversary based on the incredible TV series invented by Gene Roddenberry. This is my official review for Star Trek Beyond. This song, really? Yes, sir. So in the next installment in the reboot of this classic series, the Enterprise responds to a distress call in an unexplored part of the galaxy, but they find themselves under attack by a new threat led by the alien warrior Krall, played to perfection by Idris Elba. Separated on an alien world with nothing to rely on but their wits and survival skills, Kirk and the rest of the crew must rally together in order to stop this new threat before Krall takes the battle to the Federation. So I understand that a lot of fans were pissed when J.J. Abrams rebooted the classic franchise due to the fact that he traded thoughtful allegories and philosophical banter for more fancy space explosions and laser fights, but here's the thing that I do admire the most about his reboots, and that is his attention to character detail. And it carries through to this installment possibly better than the first two. I can't even really give J.J. the credit for this one here due to the fact that this installment was directed by Justin Lin of Fast and Furious 3 and 6. But back to the characters, J.J.'s interpretation of these classic characters and vision in younger versions was easily the best part about the series so far. But what I enjoyed most about them in this one is the fact that they're really starting to grow into the versions that Die Hard fans knew from the original series. In this one in particular, I started to notice little quirks and character traits that the characters were starting to exhibit that started to remind me a little bit more of the original cast. Like Kirk pulled a little some actions in this one and started to remind me a bit of Shatner as well as Bones Carl Urban was starting to look and sound and quote DeForest Kelly just a little bit more. Just little things I picked up here and there. Really enjoyed how they managed to pay homage to the original series. This movie did a really good job of that overall. In terms of plot, I really enjoyed the original idea and story that this movie brought. The separation of the crew worked really well and it continued what the first two did so well, which is continuing to establish these characters in a way that lets them build and play off of one another. So in the original, the complaint that a lot of people always had is that Shatner was front and center and everyone else was always struggling with their share of the spotlight. The fans didn't have a problem with this, but the crew did. But in this version, Chris Pine, yes, he is the star, but he relies on the rest of the cast in such a way that it makes both him and the rest of them stronger. So they're all feeding off of one another in this big, weird, massive energy reduction thing, and it works really well for these movies. Kind of been going on a rant about the characters here, but I shouldn't stress Chris Pine too much because once again, the rest of the cast completely kicked ass just like they did in the first two installments because I love these new guys. Zach Quinto is Spock, Carl Urban is Bones, Zoe Saldana is Ahura, Simon Pegg is Scotty, John Cho is Sulu, and the recently passed Anton Yelchin as Chekhov, R.I.P. But the clear standout here was not even Idris as the villain, would he was still great, but it was actually Sophia Boutella who kicked the ass in Kingsman and then brought it once again in this role as Jayla, an alien scavenger. She so far is two for two. She was probably the best part about this movie, the clear standout here, and I cannot wait to see what she does in the future because, man, she has got some acting chops. Can't wait to see what she does with that mummy role that she's just got with the, over with Universal. Okay, so I've ranted and raved about the good, but I do have to stress about a little bit about the bad parts, minuscule as they were. Like I said, if you are prejudiced against these reboots because they wreck your perfect idea of what Star Trek is supposed to be, then you probably won't like this version, even though, like I said before, I thought this one pays the best homage to the original series, much more than the first two do. However, the one clear, stupid thing that made me roll my eyes was how they used the Beastie Boys song in the movie. Yes, the Beastie Boys song is used in this movie. It was everyone's least favorite part of the trailer, and the way they used in the movie is so stupidly hilarious not only is it completely out of place for a star trek movie and reminiscent of a certain other franchise that this director is famous for but not when it happened it was just it was so dumb and out of place and fun i just i it, it felt almost slapstick to me that one part other than that, there's just the fact that J.J. and Justin Lin have two very distinct directorial styles, and if you pay really close in this one, you'll notice that there's a lot less lens flares and a lot more pop culture references and ridiculous unnecessary stunts. But overall, another really excellent installment in the franchise. I really enjoyed this one, easily much better than Into Darkness. It pays a perfect homage to the original series, brings back all the new cast in the best way possible, and it pays beautiful tribute, not just not, you know, shoving it in your face to the two deceased stars that appeared in the previous two, which are Leonard Nimoy and, of course, Anton Yelchin. I gave this movie 4.5 out of 5 stars. So, 
this is crazy. I cannot believe it. This The summer's almost over. I mean, we only got one more movie in the month of July, and then we got the whole month of August, and then that's it. Oh man, it just sucks because, like I said, this summer has sucked so badly so far in terms of movies, and I had to wait until almost the end of July to get another good movie. Come on, man. Okay, so that is my official review for Star Trek Beyond. What did you guys think? Are all of you diehard Star Trek fans still hating on this movie? If so, too bad, because this franchise is not going away anytime soon. So, if you like this video, click that little like button, comment, subscribe, do your thing. And for more of myself on the internet in general, follow me on Twitter at MovieNerdReview or go to my website, MovieNerdReviews.com. That is it. I'll see you next time.